Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. A day in the life of a law enforcement agent. Written, I'm just a normal Reddit. Oh, no, not this crap again. Orwa grumbled to herself as she stormed through the halls of the Arillary Station. She wasn't thrilled about this call from dispatch about the disturbance in the commerce ward, but being free and the biggest around, she had to take it. Sure, she did work for her dreams, but since being assigned to the station, her work became less uh, enjoyable. Half of the calls were from the same creatures, and half of that were giving her a headache. Excuse me, passing through, she warned before turning around the corner. Vacate the hallways, please. The Orwa was grateful the residents tolerated her and were friendly enough to scatter into bays and doorways since there was no space for her to pass by due to her girth. She sighed at the soon-to-be intervention case. Usually, her titanic size intimidated most offenders into compliance, especially when they saw her behemoth features emerge from the hallways that she was blocking entirely. When this species especially was most often not impressed, or simply amazed of her. Emerging from the hallway gate into the ward of commerce, Noora calmed dispatch for directions. Tenfold, this is dispatch sending you the location. The guide appeared on her visor, leading her through the bulk of the market to the nutrition market. As she entered one of the merchant alleys, she didn't need to guide any more, as the amassed crowd of the other end of the alleyway was pretty much the trademark of this kind of intervention call. As Noora arrived, the crowd sea parted in front of her and dissipated a little. As she saw the store owner, she also saw the confirmation of what she dreaded, the subject of the call. One of the worst members of its species, the massive Rarkarar, had encountered this one many times before. Noora despised its head fur that was oily and yellow, a third of it on the one side to its neck. She didn't understand why it needed to have sunglasses in a space station. They didn't have any sun rays getting in. She hated how it acted like nobility without being one. It couldn't even afford the attire, let alone the designation. Truly, Noora loathed the thing, this human particular. The owner flew up to meet Noora, escaping the constant berating from the angry human. Welcome, officer. Thank you for coming so quickly. Sorry for the inconvenience. The behemoth could only answer by one syllable before being cut loudly by the insufferable human that stomped with high heels to Noora, infringing her personal space. She was sure that if she was not as big as she was, the unbearable being would be screaming in her face, It took you long enough. But irony. It was just five minutes since the call, though Noora was placid reflex. The bird tried to scam me. I want you to arrest him now. The accusation fell. The feathers of the Kaya power flared up, a clear sign of surprise and indignation. Noora contracted a beak and muscles in exasperation. I can't arrest anybody without a clear and valid motive. You know that. The woman looked straight up and mammoth like head. He tried to sell me something he didn't have. He tried to scam me. Noora was impressed that the harpy could stomp repetitively in place with high heels without falling over. Why, by the highland, would he do that? I need more details. The temper bomb huffed and puffed. Hey, I'm the victim here. The behemoth winced, her neck muscles at the increasing volume of this impossible human. I was shopping, minding my own business, when this motherfucker came and offered to sell me pepper. Of course, it was one of the things I needed, but when I was to take it, he wanted the money first. And of course, this jerk didn't even have it. Then he tried to assault me, arrest him. Noora raised her shoulder plates in skepticism and interest, as you would cock an eyebrow. He tried to assault you. Oh, you deaf! That's what I said! What for? Because he wants my money! Oh my god, stop it with the stupid questions! The hulking behemoth facepalm mentally. Right. Noora closed the first party statement record for the files. Procedures, what do you know? 
Then she stepped up to the Kaya power. Now, sir, I'll need your version of the event, and please remain as truthful as possible. The mammoth-sized beast asked, while starting the third investigation log of this case, and a side-eyed the excitable human at the mention of truthful. The weird thing was how she was tapping her foot as if she was already out of patience despite just leaving her. Thank you, officer, said the diminutive avian sapient. As you know, we are but a simple shop of nutrients. And we are such since my ancestor's third degree, fourth line. Though a family-sized shop, we are established, stable, and reputed. The human scoffed. Incidentally, we only sell general goods and specific orders for regulars. The Kalakwapo calmed himself and brushed his ruffled feathers to regain his dignity of pride. And earlier this very light cycle, this human came for the first time in the shop. Of course, everybody knows the new residents. The humans that arrived one month ago in the Arurili station. He affirmed, designating the fuming human. So, I go to introduce myself and my shop and offer resistance, since I know only a few Terran flora interest my usual customers. The answer I received surprised me. Not because she refused, but because the underlying tones my translator gave me indicated disgust and indignation. The human inched closer to better hear what was said. Not sure what for, but I left her be and flew back to my counter. Moments later, she came to me while I was processing the order of another client. She wedged herself before the two customers already waiting before her and interrupted my work. There was nobody there, interjected the invasive human. Norwa imitated a human sign and pushed back. Please don't interrupt the statement. You already did yours. Step back where I asked you to wait. The female interloper grumbled and slowly skidded back. Please continue. Um, right. So she asked me something, but I was occupied, so I politely asked her to wait. The Kaya power glanced at the human, but she repeated it two times, louder each time. I must commend my one employee of the day that cut short his mandatory thought prey ritual to pass the goods customers. Well, I was stuck with it. Naora gripped her fists in acknowledgement. As soon as I finished my task, the human yelled over the counter on me about slowness and rudeness. We don't have more than two cashiers here, so slowness at times is expected. And Kaya Power are always formal towards strangers. I said so, but she didn't believe me, even as I was talking formally to her. The human piped up. Don't listen to him, it's just a stupid bird. The woolly behemoth stiffened, her glutes in annoyance. Ma'am, please stay distanced and quiet. This interferes with the investigation. The impatient human crossed her arms with a face of displeasure. And? Sorry. She asked the question again. I'll not quote it for the plethora of insults and allusions to it. But she wanted a uh, uh, pet... Uh, pe peppers? Uh, a Terran vegetable, yes, one with capsaicin in it. Noora annotated the chemical restrictions files. She also demanded, um, coffee. The female human was staring daggers at the Kaya power. Of course, I didn't have it. We take special orders, but I don't have a dangerous toxic chemical dealing permit. Those are for species, it doesn't affect... And I'm sure as the elder tree that I don't want to deal hazardous drugs. He's lying! A cursed human jumped between them, jabbing a finger on its beak. I know he fucking has it! Stop talking crap and fucking give it to me! The kind is king witch! The aura, exasperated, rolled her back muscles again. Would you please stop interrupting the statement? I've told you twice. I've told you thrice. If this continues, I'll be forced to temporarily freeze you. Breathe in, breathe out. Then, I said to the human, then she started yelling. Yells about outreach, yells about poor service. She demanded I give her what I don't have, like now. Lots of vulgarities in between. Then she threatened to sue me. 
We are only a small shop. We can't afford legal procedures. All right, I understand. Please confirm the authenticity of the statement with a vow and your designation, please. The walking giant finished the second party statement and pocketed the recorder in a vest. She took some witness statements and then it was time for the hardest part. Norma sighed. Every time she saw this damned headache of a human, it was doing socially harmful things twice a week. She couldn't even enjoy her free time since that was used to cure her cerebral pain. And here she was, walking towards the source of her ailment. But this time, she knew it would be worthwhile. What are you doing? You are not going to arrest him, asked the human. The towering titan put a grip on her multi-being manacles. Oh, I don't have anything to arrest him on. However, based on the party statements and the witness testimonies, I will be obliged to arrest you. The maddening human was outraged. What? How dare you? You can't do this. I didn't do anything wrong. The oar's ribs twitched in guilty pleasure. Well, let me tell you under which charges you will be charged. Obstruction of law enforcement agent, falsification of facts, public threats, extortion attempts, harassment, and disturbing of peace. While she manacled the human, it resisted the arrest. You can't do this! I know my rights! Do you know who I am? I know your boss! You will be fired! Norwa was thankful to the stars that his species was slightly stronger than the humans, because the thing tried to wrestle its way out. Another line, another charge. Resisting arrest is a heavy one, and empty threats won't be of any help to you. This is discrimination! This is tyranny! Gesticulated the human. Noah gave a flex of satisfaction. Anything you can say can and will be held against you in a court of law. She called the transport. You have the right to an attorney. Open the transport. If you cannot afford an attorney, she put the human on the convict seat. One will be appointed for you. Then just before closing the door, and you have the right to remain silent. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.